Good to see you once again. We are joined as always by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a James Beard Award nominee. The group includes Rustico, two locations in Alexandria and Ballston, Red Apron, two locations at Union Market and down in Merrifield. Greg, it is always good to see you. Good to see you too. What do we have on tap this week? So this week, we've talked about Destrusa um, before on yeah. the show. It's um, a really amazing small batch brewery in West Flanders, Belgium, and Urban Coteau is the uh, owner and brewmaster there. He's a very close friend of mine and of our, our group and, and Blue Jacket. We've done uh, two different beers with them in Belgium and a couple others uh, here stateside at Blue Jacket, but all of this relationship came from my absolute love and passion for the beers that he produces. Um, kind of, the Destruce is kind of like one of those breweries that really started to push the envelope for what Belgian beer was today, uh, back in the mid 2000s, uh, making incredibly rich and decadent beers that uh, you know were heralded from the start. I think it was the number one brewery in the world in 2008. So uh, no shortage of accolades for Destrusa. And um, they may perhaps be best known at this point for the Black Damnation series of beers. And so what that is is an opportunity for Urban to uh, kind of play around with a, a base beer um, that he calls Black Albert, which is a really strong, intense imperial stout fermented with Belgian yeast that gives it a little bit of more of a, a fruity um, note to it. So almost a Belgian strong ale meets imperial stout. And so for Black Damnation, each one as we go is, is something uh, different uh, utilizing Black Black Albert. So what we're drinking today is, is Mocha Bomb, and uh, let's just get right in and okay. I'll explain it to you afterwards. Mm. Top almost looks like espresso. It's got that on the palate as well. Oh, mommy. That's good. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Decadent, um, rich, intense, but not slick and also not too, not too and dexterous. It's got a nice um, clean richness on the palate. Lots of mocha, coffee notes in the nose. Cocoa, a little hint of, um, of smoke in the finish as well. Some red berry fruit. Just uh, a finish that's still going on right now. You know, it's. Yes, cheers. Amazing stuff. And in the bottle, I love this. Ingredients water, barley, hops, sugar, uh, yeast, and a dark twist of the mind. That's right. <laughs> that's the Black Damnation series is uh, a dark twist of Urban's mind is what they say. So what they do with this one is it's a blend of three different threads of beer. 50% um, of the beer is that Black Albert Imperial Stout that I mentioned. After it's done fermenting, rather than being kegged off or bottled as Black Albert, they let it additionally condition on Colombian coffee. So it's a, basically a coffee-infused Black Albert. That makes up 50% of the beer. The other two threads are 25% each. So um, the cool thing about this one, another cool thing, is that 25% of the beer is actually not even a Destrusa beer. It's Helen Verdomenes, which is an incredible imperial stout from the uh, brewery De Molen um, from the Netherlands. Oh, wow. Uh, Menno up there makes amazing stuff. So basically, they ship the beer to Strusa, and then they age that um, Helen Verdomenes Imperial Stout at the Strusa in Jack Daniels barrels. So it's Jack Daniels barrels uh, aged Helen Verdomenes for 25%. And then the final 25% is something called Cuvée Delphine, which is um, Black Albert aged in bourbon barrels. Wow. So lots of different things coming into this amazing uh, beer. And good news for lovers of Strusa in the U.S. is that um, they're making more beer all the time. You know, a lot of the beer is actually brewed at a century-old brewery near uh, nearby called Decca. So they kind of go in and gypsy brew there. Um, but then they're brewing more and more of the beer at their headquarters, which is an old converted schoolhouse in Oostvelderen. So we're seeing more and more stuff, and we're seeing more and more draft, uh, which is incredible. So bottles are are still uh, here and there, but draft beer is coming in a lot. We pour it all the time at Church Key, um, but also at GBD, our fried chicken donuts place. We always have uh, stuff from Struis on draft. Okay, because I was going to ask you about the availability of it. It's and very, it sounds pretty, like it's, it's getting, getting more getting available better. all the time. And in fact, we're about to open um, Red Apron's uh, third location in uh, Penn Quarter on D Street. 
and we'll be opening with um, some Strusa beers on draft there as well. <laughs> Nothing going on in Penn Quarter. Why would you open right, a right. <laughs> place there? What would you pair this with? So obviously, I mean, you think about this as dessert in a glass, so you could go with dessert, but if you're thinking about more savory, I think of really intense, pungent cheeses. So, I mean, this could go great with just like a really fantastic, rich macaroni and cheese dish. Um, you know, dryness to dig into the sharpness of the cheese that's utilized uh, would match it for intensity on the palate. Think of like grilled cheese or, you know, even cheeseburgers, like uh, think of like blackened uh, blue cheeseburgers would be fantastic with this intense, roasty richness. Uh, that would be uh, absolutely fantastic, actually. And 13%, so beware. Keep that yes. in mind, because you can't, I can't tell. I mean, yeah. it's, you know. You want, it more, <laughs> you want to go back to it either way, so. We'll leave you smiling. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly, and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.